Ma'am, we are live. So, hello, a very warm welcome to all. My name is Esther Schmidt. I am the director of the Center for Historic Houses. And this part is, uh, this lecture today is part of our lecture series, Great Minds in um, Heritage and Historic Houses. I'm very pleased to have Professor Petrucciulli visiting from Italy um, today, um, who has published very extensively and done extensive research um, on um, Indian palaces, also Islamic art and architecture. He was also the head of the Aga Khan program for um, um, architecture at MIT. He is the founder of the Biblioteca Orientalis um, in South Italy and uh, Dean of the, art, uh, of the Architecture School there. This lecture is the first of a series we are planning on um, Indian palaces and trying to make sense of Indian palaces. And this is both um, very exciting and uh, also challenging at the same time. It starts with what is actually an Indian palace? For example, in a very concrete um, case, we are um, organizing Palace Day for India. We started this two years ago in collaboration with the European Network for Royal Palaces. And we had the mandate to only include royal palaces. But what is a palace? What should we include and not include? Sometimes people call a building a palace and um, from looking at the building, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a palace. Then we have so many different names. Um, so what about the etymology? What is a kila? What is a mahel? Um, why should we talk about uh, the English word palace? How does a palace make sense with its environment? It can be also an artificial environment. If we talk about, let's say, Udaipur, it's an artificially created lake, which is um, something we often encounter in Rajasthan. So does this reflect in the iconography? Does it re uh, reflect in the color scheme? Does it uh, reflect in the materiality, for example, in historic houses? How about the response with other cultures, um, worlds apart, not in the close proximity? which could be European culture, which could be other Asian culture. I'm just talking about Chinese art, for instance, which also prominently featured. And of course, the different religious traditions in India. All of these are complex questions. We have the question of the exterior and the interior, which very often is a very fluid affair in the Indian context. We have the question of gender, the male mandana part and the female zanana part. So all of these big questions um, are something that we would like to look at. And everyone who works with Indian palaces knows that it's extremely difficult to find written sources in many cases. So this is why I'm very excited to have Professor Petrucciulli here because he is looking now at what we can, how we can actually read the Indian palace from just looking at, looking at the structure, but looking at the planning, making sense um, between the exterior um, of the architecture and the landscape around it and the other architecture around um, the palace. So from this um, moment now, I'd like to uh, give the floor to Professor Petru Chuli. Um, please um, screen share and again, a warm welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us today. Um, good morning. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's, uh, I love this opportunity to talk about it, the palaces uh, with you, and uh, I appreciate this technology that allows us to meet so frequently now between Italy and, and India. Um, I will uh, go on following uh, what I already told you last time. Uh, I will very quickly resume the, the few concepts that I have introduced because I will mention I have also a certain language that uh, should become familiar with you. Um, so I suggest that we go immediately to the images. So I think uh, I can, uh, first of all, uh, um, do this. Uh, I take this. I open the, my PowerPoint. I make, uh, where is condivision? You see the green uh, share screen button? No, I, I'm trying to find where is uh, the, the possibility of sharing. Uh, let's see. Let me, hmm. what, ah, okay, here I share, yeah. then I press here. 
And uh, in theory, it should appear now somewhere. Oh. It's usually helpful if you um, start the presentation first and then you click on the on the uh, screen. Share. I have I have opened the the oh. I have it I have it already here. Okay. Great. Can you see the the, the my PowerPoint? Yes, but it's just not on the presentation uh, mode. No, yet. no, of course, of course. Uh, that that I can manage immediately. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yes, that's it. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. So, well, um, so uh, last time I I have introduced this uh, concept of typological process of the house that uh, we call basic type. And uh, the typological process of the palace that we that is one of these uh, special types. I also um, said that um, the uh, typological process of the special types, like the convent, the palace, the hospital, the school, etc., they all derive from the uh, from the house. But it could happen also that the um, the typological process of the house sometimes also crosses those uh, branches of the special types, you know, because it's like a very intriguing, uh, complicated tree. Um, then I have um, um, suggested that uh, the, the, the spaces, the cells, you know, can be aggregated in two gen general ways, you know, serial, that is a rep repetition uh, of an iter iterative system of, uh, of cells that are almost, uh, almost equal so with a very limited hierarchy or the organic in which the aggregation is integrated and uh, all the uh, various elements are connected together by necessity. It means that you cannot eliminate one part uh, without uh, disaggregate completely all the uh, all the organism. I also said that uh, the there are too many two two ways of uh, moving into the into the architecture and therefore into the, the palace. One is the axial, that means a linear along one axis, for instance, that leads from A to B, or anti-nodal path. Um, uh, this is a specific language that means that uh, instead of going along the axis straight, you have a, a, a tendency to organize uh, the movement around uh, uh, around a, an open space along the edges of this open space, which is a typical approach into the courtyard systems. Um, then I have. Uh, explain how the urban uh, block is uh, spontaneous, uh, spontaneously formed. Uh, and uh, this logic of formation of, this, of the urban block uh, can be introduced into the palace or the convent uh, because it is the same logic that goes from uh, hierarchically from the matrix path to the implant, secondary uh, path, to the uh, connection that is the tertiary kind of path. Um, um, of course, uh, the, the idea of type uh, is, uh, is uh, something that is specific of, of, our, of, uh, of our country and our school. Uh, uh, it was formulated by Saverio Muratori in the 50s and all the school is developing uh, around this, uh, this uh, idea and using this, uh, this mental tool um, in order to simplify the interpretation of the of, uh, of the fabric and the architecture that sometimes might be very very uh, complicated, um, we uh, also uh, believe that uh, we have to analyze uh, and interpret all the typological process occurring in a certain uh, in a certain area or in a certain building in order to understand it from the point of view of the process more than uh, just uh, as a single uh, as a single element in a in a specific moment 
because uh, also this is very important because we believe that in history, therefore in this process, are embedded the principles and the guidelines and the ideas and the, even the rules of the design. So we don't believe that design is something that you invent from scratch, but that you find embedded in the typological process. Good. So we were uh, here, um, and I was talking about. Uh, let, let me let me take. Uh, I'm trying to get. No, doesn't work. Uh, this would be difficult because the the. I don't have. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Oh, sorry. So I was talking about uh, a, 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 a an aggregation similar to this here. I, let me remove the image here. Similar to this, which is a very um, uh, simple aggregation of courtyards, one next to the others, almost sometimes random. And um, this is a typical aggregation of anti-nodal uh, space, uh, spaces. That means that they induce a movement that in general is around the edge of the, of the courtyard or moving from one entrance and an exit in this way and so on, you know. And uh, in which is very, what it becomes very important is the threshold, you know, here, 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 etc. Um, the, in general, this kind of, uh, of arrangement is very, very, very peculiar and very, uh, and we can find in almost every big uh, uh, complex palaces that we have in, in, northern, in northern India. Um, the other possibility is that uh, you arrange your, um, your, your spaces of, this, uh, of the big palace the, I bring uh, here the example of Ukaidir, which is the 8th century in Iraq. So it's far from India, but it's important because it's the idea, it's an idea that is present in the Persian tradition that at a certain point will enter, as I will show you, in, also in the in the Indian in the Indian uh, urban culture, uh, let's say architectural culture. So it basically arranging along a, pro, a, a path that goes from an entrance, for instance, through several spaces, Iwan, an open antinodal uh, courtyard that can be uh, so, uh, crossed either straight in this direction that at the end will lead to the hall of the throne because all those are more or less royal palaces or it could lead into a typical antinodal movement to the various baits or uh, apartments that are arranged in a more serial way around all the all the core of the of the of the royal palace let's concentrate on the first case here and uh, i show you uh, a, an interesting an interesting uh, situation that occurs in Amman, uh, which is um, the capital of Jordan, as you know. And uh, the palace is a, a, belongs to the first dynasty of the Omayyad caliphs. And uh, it's, uh, the ruins are here, you see. And uh, it is interesting because it is organized as a pattern of uh, uh, courtyards, uh, uh, one one next to the other, you know, that you see almost uh, random. There, there's no logical aggregation into it, okay? And all of them are dominated by an antinodal way of uh, using it around uh, around around the edges of the of the enclosure. But in the same time, you have the presence of a strong. Uh, uh, the uh, axis that goes from the vestibule, the entrance, let's say this big square, the, 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 the Jama Masjid, and then the vestibule, and then an entrance that goes theoretically up to, uh, on the throne. But at this point, the movement becomes a sort of antinodal 
because it, it, it has to reach the throne that is not in the same axis of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the street, let's say. Don't ask me why, um, but evidently it's, uh, it could be also a product of a, 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 an encroachment or increase of this maybe open space here, or I don't, uh, it's not very clear, but we see the, the presence in the same time of the two logics uh, and none of them are uh, run up to the most logic and uh, coherent way. Um, let's uh, let's see uh, this palace. So this is one of the earliest palaces, or huge huge palace. Uh, we are now talking of uh, uh, let's say royal uh, royal big uh, big complexes. The, in which we note uh, the, some interesting things. So, you know, we have here all the components of the of the of the, of the Rajput Palace, uh, a, a huge uh, courtyard, uh, courtyard. I mean, open space with all the facilities, tables, and so on, that leads into the um, into the palace through an antinodal approach. You know, you, you know, uh, from the side and then. Uh, Turning into into courtyard and entering into these spaces, what uh, uh, what you see then is the the so-called zenana, which is a later addition. I, I will explain why I'm saying that. And then this uh, complex of sequence of courtyards that are very serial, you know, so just cells organized around the edges. And uh, this part uh, is also is serial, also because uh, it, it is the servant area and court. Okay. But uh, one interesting thing that we have to note, and that is very typical of uh, the Indian uh, palaces, is the what I'm saying now. Look at this uh, the portion of the Mansingh Palace, you know, uh, in Gwalior. Um, we have uh, here. Um, an entrance that is, uh, let's say, tangent, so suggesting an antinodal approach to the to all the system in this point. And then uh, you can enter either into one courtyard like this or the other courtyard that is here. Now, you will note the difference between, for instance, this complex and this, for instance. The fact that this one in in every courtyard you have a, a, a specialization of the parts because you have a big uh, let's say divan here another formal um, formal uh, hall here in front of the other one they are um, they are connected by a sort of visual axis like this etc etc no as you can see. The other one is in a certain way similar. You have here a sort of axiality and so on. But what I want to point out is the fact that uh, even when the, those single courtiers are more specialized, more formal, therefore more organic also, and integrated into, into various parts with the hierarchy, the strong hierarchy, therefore they are organisms, they are never connected between themselves into a bigger organism, a total organism. Uh, for instance, you know, you arrive here and then you enter from here into this, or you can enter, reach through this and in this way, always uh, in, in an antinodal way, or, uh, um, or, uh, or here you can enter from here, etc. So what I want to say, there's no uh, integration between the various organisms uh, into a bigger organism. That this tendency of, um, and uh, this is uh, probably, this is normal in India, but it's a bit strange for us that we are Westerns, that if we have, we tend to reorganize all the single uh, organism into a, 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 a bigger total organic uh, system. Um, why this occurs in India uh, uh, and how oh, it, it's, it's intriguing, and uh, I will uh, I have uh, uh, an idea that I will I will suggest uh, very soon. 
I'll show you just one more example to insist on this uh, on this idea. This is the Gujari Palace. It's in Gwalior again, not in the fort, just nearby. And uh, as you can see, um, it is uh, organized along a, a longer a long courtyard that is very regular. Okay, but uh, with uh, with a few openings, not symmetrical. Okay, as you can see the this threshold, the entrance to the palace is uh, is antinodal, okay? It's not central or formal and so on, but it's just tangent antinodal. And uh, the various uh, by is Arabic uh, apartments or courtyards, they have uh, formally organized, but totally autonomous, but they are uh, they are very similar, not necessarily all equal, but they are not, uh, not put into one axis with the others and so on. Those are more important, okay, than the others. But, you know, everyone has its own uh, um, character, let's say, uh, but they are not organized in a, in a strong uh, system that goes behind just the enclosure that is uh, square and regular. Okay, let me now make a, a small digression and uh, try to explain what is the logic behind. Uh, Professor um, Nitz Gutschow, um, he is um, very, very, very well known in India, of course. He, he studied particularly uh, uh, cities and uh, Barakpur that you see here in particular, but also Varanasi. And um, he uh, was particularly interested into the problem of the ritual movement. So basically what he demonstrated is that uh, if you take a city like uh, um, Barakpur, uh, you would see that uh, there are several open spaces, you know, that are scattered, scattered in the middle of the fabric. Those uh, uh, open spaces, they contain a, an idol or a source, you know, Tirta, um, but uh, they have, uh, uh, they are totally, let's say, autonomous. Um, it means that uh, you understand them as a single episodes, but uh, uh, you don't understand if you're a priest or if you're just a normal person, even an inhabitant, you don't read them as a, a unity, as a, a total organism. But uh, once in a while, during the year, two, three times in a year, there are processions, uh, ritual movements that uh, will move from one to the other of those, of those uh, spaces, uh, according to a precise right order, uh, that is very prescriptive and so on. So what I he suggests, and I agree, and I like this theory, is that uh, the total organism doesn't exist in the in the physical structure, but it's a mental structure that occurs when uh, uh, using the ritual movement. Uh, Let's call that a Tirta Yatra. That means uh, the movement uh, uh, through uh, visiting the various sources, which is actually what the pilgrims do in in, in Varanasi too, etc., etc., etc. That's that's very familiar to you. That uh, that all this movement constitutes creates a sort of uh, mental uh, organism that is called Kshet. And that, uh, uh, and that what is also interesting is that this uh, shed is a sort of fragment, frag, fractal, fractal uh, uh, idea, let's say, of space, because it applies to um, a courtyard, it applies to uh, an urban fabric like Barakpur. I have read the Dal Lake as a Tirta Yatra, you know, of the of the um, around the lake uh, and, and even india is a shape no okay so i hope that i have convinced you uh, let me um, oh, sorry let me go on
So uh, on on this uh, basic basis, let's say uh, a, a certain uh, what I think a revolution occurred in a certain way in the organization and in the principles, um, and it occurred in my opinion in Fatehpur Sikri. Fatehpur Sikri is the capital of uh, the the uh, of the Mughals at the time of Akbar. Akbar is a well known uh, emperor with um, a great inter interest for the architecture in itself, but also for the architecture of the empire and the administration of the empire. And um, building his new capital, he really introduced uh, certain vital, important uh, changes that uh, will, uh, after that, will be adopted everywhere in the various Maharajas, palaces, that uh, particularly in the north of India. Um, the city, you know, probably it, it is developed on the top of a ridge, a very, very, very short ridge, it's 40 meters above the plains of the, of the, of the Doab, and uh, it consists on, uh, on a huge uh, uh, mosque that is 156 meters long, you know, dedicated uh, to Selim Chisti, that actually lived in this area, the famous holy man of the Chistia family, and uh, uh, various uh, uh, various uh, structures of service, including this huge caravanserai uh, that uh, are organized uh, around uh, the, the palace and the palace. Um, what the first intriguing thing uh, that you see in this uh, in this palace is that uh, in it is organized, let's say, it is planned uh, in a certain way against the nature, no? Um, because all the other uh, service spaces are organized along the contour lines, uh, the, uh, the obvious uh, way of positioning uh, these structures in this case, but the palace is structured, you know, you know, with a rotation of 45 degrees. Um, that uh, in, in implies for instance, that in certain places, like uh, under this corner here, under this corner and so on, and in this area also, you will have substructures that are 20 meters tall, you know, and uh, totally unuseful and very expensive. But probably the reason is that uh, he wanted to be, to, he wanted to have the palace oriented with the mosque. What means that? Well, uh, it means uh, that uh, he was also starting probably to develop this idea of the uh, connection between the throne and the divinity, the divinity that is extremely heterodox with Islam, but uh, that, uh, that he used and he played with a lot during his life. Uh, I don't uh, go on because I want to talk of the structure. From this model that we made in in the in the eighties, and unfortunately it went, uh, uh, you know, destroyed. Uh, you see that um, all the system is based on uh, um, antinodal <clears throat> antinodal courtyards, sometimes very serial, like the divaniam that is here. Uh, other uh, more uh, more uh, more specialized with uh, insertion. Uh, of pavilions and, and nodal elements, elements that are uh, appearing in, in, in more monumental, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, uh, as a as a continuous sequence that creates a, so, a fluid space through it, you know, that is totally uh, meandric and labyrinthic, if you want, because it is dictated by the position of the thresholds, essentially. What uh, uh, appears very, very, very clearly is uh, the uh, core of the Zenana that is located here, that is a, a real sort of fortress and therefore uh, extremely um, close, regular, strong, but also in the same time specialized because uh, the, the, the parts uh, we will see later uh, that are repetitive are limited and it's made out of uh, single objects that are quite, uh, monumental if you want always around this edge what is the narrative behind what is the model not the narrative what is the model that he had in time in mind 
the model he had in time was uh, clearly the Mughal encampment. Um, the Mughal encampment, because uh, the, uh, the dynasty was uh, basically nomadic, culturally nomadic, they used to move uh, the court easily from a place to the other. The movement of the court implied uh, sometimes uh, 30,000 people, you know. That means a, a city in movement. So it was a real exercise of planning every night, you know, when they had to make the, to, you know, to organize the, the, the encampment. Therefore, there were uh, certain rules. Basic rules were that um, um, there was uh, uh, the, 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 the palace of the, of the emperors was more or less in the center because all the other encampment of the nobles and so on they had to face the tent of the emperor. Then you have a vestibule where the Akash Diya, that means the uh, eternal lamp, uh, was burning during the presence of the emperor. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the, the sequence that goes from public to the, to the semi-public to the private. That is uh, the Divaniyam, the space for the public audiences, which is uh, an enclosure, another enclosure, which is the Divani Kass, plus uh, various other tents for services and so on, and then the uh, Zenana, the space of the, of the ladies. Um, the, all this, uh, the, the, let's say, the, the encampment of the emperor was anticipated by uh, this huge space with uh, the arsenal, the stables, the elephants, and uh, all, the, all the services, you know, of the, of, the, of the palace itself. Around, you know, there was a bazaar, activities, services, and then the encampment of, of the princes, one, two, and three. Now, this drawing, uh, uh, comes from uh, a, a British uh, translator, Blockman, uh, who tried to give the sense of, of, uh, of this description that is actually described in the Ain i Akbari, the, uh, the record of Akbar, a sort of encyclopedia in which all the kingdom and the, and the habits and the laws and the buildings and the, you know, and, and so on are described, including the encampment. Now, uh, in my opinion, this, uh, this drawing is misleading because it's made by a British person. So he immediately felt the necessity to organize all that with an axis, you know, uh, and so on, with symmetries. Look at these diagonal paths that have no sense, clearly, and so on. Most probably, the sequence is that, but uh, most probably it was a sequence of enclosures that not necessarily were oriented in the same way, but they were one next to the other, one after the other. Like Patipur Sikri's palace, you know, that, is, uh, that follows this uh, model, let's say, ideal model, but arranges the, um, the various courtiers in uh, various, uh, in different ways oriented, uh, uh, you know, sometimes to the north, sometimes to the south, and so on and so forth. The movement, uh, uh, therefore, in Fante Pursicri is, uh, as I said, uh, meandric. You have one, two, two accesses in the palace, basically. One comes from the aggregate. It's a long bazaar access, straight, and goes into the, uh, the, 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 the gate of the Divanyam which is here. And then uh, from the, from the Divanyam, uh, it stops. And um, uh, because after you enter into the domain of the, of the, of the, of the court and, 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 uh, and, uh, and Akbar, and Akbar. The other one goes along the shores of the lake. There was an artificial lake all, all here. The shores of the lake, and here turns, takes a ramp, through the Atipole enters into the presence of the palace. That includes, of course, the palace of Akbar itself, but also the palace of Jahangir that was here. It's now almost in ruin and so on. From here, 
you i uh, know okay i will show you the, the detail uh, later okay but again here you can enter into the palace of akbar and then through uh, the various uh, changes of direction you can uh, uh, land near the famous punch mahal that everybody knows the same meandric um, structure you will read for instance in the palace of uh, jaipur that is later in uh, the um, in the um, palace of lahore the fort of lahore etc cetera, etc cetera. okay now next okay um with this uh, axonometrical drawing we can read better this uh, uh, sort of uh, sequence of, uh, of 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 courtyards no um okay one arrives here enters here and uh, here you have the um you have the divani am with the with the uh, with the pavilion of the throne of akbar the um then uh, you see the various uh, courtyards, the Divanikas, which is this, the, the record office, Daftar Khane, that is here, another courtyard. And then uh, some leftover spaces later on arranged as a smaller courtyards, you know, that I will explain a bit later when I talk. And uh, look at the, at the approach, that is very interesting, because through this gate, you enter through after the Ati Ati pole, you enter here and then uh, you enter here, you have a Jikan, you have another Jikan, and then you land in in this area in front of the of the Panch Mahal, that actually is a sort of vestibule of the of the harem. Then uh, it is checked again and then you enter into the into the harem. You enter. Only those that are allowed. Um, as you can see, the architecturally speaking, uh, all the singular architecture are made of two two components. You know, one is uh, very serious repetitive cells, portico, porticos, basically that encircle the, the spaces, and uh, the addition of uh, some nodal element. You know, landmarks. You know, uh, specialized buildings, uh, of course that have the various, various functions. And uh, um, I will mention in a, in, in a second. Sometimes in the middle of the courtyards, you have some nodal, or the, some of those pavilions that are, I call nodal buildings, you know, I mean, sort of central references. Uh, so you, one, uh, one, one is here, this is Miriam Makani house. This is the so-called Divanikas. Actually, it's not the Divanikas, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes it is in the center, sometimes it is at the, in the, at the edges of this. Sometimes it's an element of transition, like the, the pavilion of the throne here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The serial repetitive porticos that encircle our, the, 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 the courtyards. And uh, now um, I, um, I have to uh, admit that uh, I, I'll show you a typical mistake that uh, might be might occur when you read uh, the spaces like that uh, with a mentality that doesn't fit, you know, and that was my case. Um, I started to study Fatipur Sikri 50 years ago. And um, so reading, uh, uh, reading uh, this complex, uh, being uh, Italian, I needed to find a rule that could lead this complex of uh, um, um, episodes uh, that are organic episodically, that are organic episodically into a total organism. And therefore, I, uh, since all that looked very disordered to me, I wanted to find a, a rule, a superior rule of control that could lead this into a total organism. And I thought that it was possible uh, through a system of axialities, axes, no visual axes mainly, no, uh, that connected those uh, uh, nodal elements, pavilions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. No? But in reality, you know, you see that, um, uh, I don't know, if you take the, the, the 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 two axes of the anuptala or no the, the the pool 
the, monu the monumental pool that is here, here in front of the residence of the emperor. You see that, for instance, this axis is the only one that actually uh, touches three of those monuments. The others are, uh, you know, you know, other a bit eccentric and so on and so on. This is the only one. But also, uh, the other the other problem is that uh, from here to here, from the bath to the to the to to this pavilion, you don't see them. No, you don't see them. So it, it doesn't make sense since you don't see them. It is simply, most probably casual. It was not planned. So this is, I consider a, a, a mistake on myself because I, in a certain way, applied a mentality uh, a, 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 that is a, a foreign mentality to a, a, a way of building and thinking uh, the spaces and the sequence of the spaces that is different. Okay, after this um, uh, mea culpa, we say in Italian, okay, let's go on. And we enter also into questions uh, related to the, to, the, to the functions and uh, another important uh, innovation made by Akbar, okay? Um, uh, Akbar, in the time of Akbar, there is a lot of uh, rethinking and a real uh, uh, incredible um, revolution, if you want, also of many, uh, many principles. In this period is very is common and uh, very frequent. Uh, the theory of the perfect man, that uh, of course uh, applies perfectly and uh, I'm sure Akbar loved that uh, to him. Uh, so he was, uh, you know, celebrated as the perfect man. And the perfect man, of course, had to have perfect women. And therefore, uh, the idea of segregation of the female, um, if not started exactly there, but most probably it was uh, implemented enormously in the time of Akbar, and particularly in Fateh Sikri, I think. Uh, strongly in Fateh Sikri. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, the, the women that uh, before, either in the Rajput tradition or even in the Mughal, were more free to move around and mix with, uh, with men, they were strongly segregated. And uh, uh, what uh, also is, is important to know, all the Rajput that uh, um, enter into an alliance with the Mughals, uh, and even the others that did not, but uh, they were extremely uh, influenced by the, this culture and this custom. Therefore, they started to modify their, uh, their, um, their, pulse, their pulses, you know, and uh, according to this new uh, to this new costume and tradition of the of the segregation of the female. Now, um, the question of the functions of the palaces is sometimes uh, intriguing and difficult because uh, um, clearly you know that uh, most of the spaces are flexible. Uh, differently from the modern architecture, where the the bathroom is distinct. No, uh, but bad example, where uh, the, the bedroom is distinguished by, from the living room, uh, you know, in, the, in those spaces, but even in the, in the Western countries, they are quite flexible. So you can sleep here or there, you know, at the end. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, grosso modo, I, uh, I, we can recognize the, the sequence of the accompaniment and uh, the various functions described by the Ayin, in Fatehpur Sikri. So the Divanyam, uh, Divanyam, I already mentioned, the public space. And then you, you, he was able to enter into the, the area uh, of the, uh, of the of, let's call that Mardana, space of the man, where uh, him, of course, and the various ministers and, uh, and uh, collaborators were allowed, were the, uh, the, the, the residential space and uh, most probably the Divanikas was located here. This uh, very formal pool, uh, uh, very also symbolic uh, pool, 
was uh, located here. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and that's it. Then uh, we have uh, uh, two more spaces, the Daftar Cane, a space uh, of the record office, the ministers, the officers, and the activity of the administration. And uh, this uh, space that is pecu peculiar, that is mentioned in the in the in the in the Ain Yakbari next to the Divanikas as a space of meditation uh, that is described as a sort of a platform with uh, with uh, a sort of tent on top of it, but uh, that later on was transformed uh, in stone into that peculiar little dado. Uh, of the so-called divanikas uh, that is uh, inside is based on a pilaster no, with a platform on top, uh, if you remember, etc. Um, all the rest is the zenana, which is uh, centered by the uh, core of the zenana, this very closed uh, uh, enclosure here. And the various other spaces, and you know, with the pavilions probably of important queens, we don't know exactly which ones, a little gardens and various facilities. This uh, Panch Mahal, this most probably was a place where um, ladies used to stay. It was surrounded by jallies, so it was possible to stay uh, and look into the Divanikas without being seen, you know, so and so on. And other spaces of service, uh, very serial, repetitive, as you see, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, were at the service of the, uh, of the palace and mostly of the, of the Zenana. What else we can say? Uh, one, one important uh, interesting thing, and this is, in a way, it's a, it's a, it's a double system of movement into the, into the palace is this system of one, one bridge and, uh, uh, and the other bridge that is not drawn here, but they existed, now demolished, coming out of the core of the Zenana and moving on the roof of the, of the, of the palace everywhere. So it was possible from here to cross, to reach the room, to go down into the, the, into the, uh, on the top of the, of the Divaniam, and the screen, most probably, so that it was impossible to see the ladies, but they were able to see everything that was uh, occurring in the palace. And from here, on the contrary, they were able to go down in on the top of the caravansarai that was uh, at the lower level next to the shores, and then up to the shores of the of the of the lake. <clears throat> Just a notation of on the on the on the core of the of the of the of the, of the Zenana is this um, this uh, palace into the palace, let's say, that is characterized again by uh, an, an an anti an anti nodal movement. Clearly, you enter from the from the entrance, and uh, uh, you can uh, reach the various apartments of the ladies. Where, as you can see, the special parts are prevalent, you know, only the repetitive are, the serial ones are very limited in the corners. And, uh, but also marked by the, the sort of visual axis, you know, that connect the four main palaces. I want you to point out the, the a certain contradiction in a way, or presence in the same time, but I see contradictory between the 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 in, the, 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 the will of uh, uh, designing uh, along a visual axis these uh, the the main uh, nodal elements, but in the same time to mark the corners, okay, which suggests a, a, a different idea in this in in uh, in, in Italy would be a real radial system, okay? Typical of the central plan buildings, the churches and so on, in which uh, all the axes are equivalent in any case, okay? But in this case, these are axes that you can more or less uh, walk through and reach the places. 
But this axis actually go into the structure, so they are not axes in reality, but dividing structure. So, in few words, you this the presence of this uh, dividing uh, line suggests again the idea that in order to reach this, you have to take an anti-nodal movement, of course. You know, and so you reach from here and then you enter there, etc. Okay, now. Um, we make a, a jump, but not in time. So we are in the same time and uh, we are in Amer. Uh, what happens in Amer? A, an, important, an important thing because the, the dynasty of the, uh, the Kachawa ra, uh, Rajas, they enter uh, into the service of, the, of, the, of Akbar. And Mansingh, uh, the, the, the Raja is the name, as you know. And um, he uh, immediately adopt uh, the uh, Mughal traditions and those introduced by Akbar. And this uh, is evident in the architecture. Uh, the um, family of the Oman Singh lived in a palace called the Narsingji Palace that was at the foot of the present palace of Amer. This, uh, let's say, house, big house, etc., consisted originally in uh, an enclosure, okay, where men and women lived, you know, uh, all together, uh, more or less like this. But of course, uh, this this drawing is made from the present situation, so it's a sort of reconstruction. There was a temple, separate, and uh, a big uh, enclosure in front for the facilities, as usually the stable and so on and so forth. You see here the plan, okay, the entrance and the, 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 the facilities, okay? Now, um, what happens? Uh, it happens that at a certain point, they have to create uh, the separation from between men and, and, uh, and, and women, between Zenana and Mardana. And this happens in, in a very simple way. The old, uh, house, the old house, the palace, is converted into Zenana, period. And uh, uh, all the facilities that are required for the Mardana, particularly the Divani Am, uh, Divani, Divani Kas, etc., etc., et are built here, in this area, in between. I'll show you the, 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 the axle. Atten attention, I have wrote here, it is rotation. So you have to imagine that here you have the, the vestibule, the big enclosure of the, of the facilities. This is the end. This is the temple here. This is the old Zenana, okay? The old Zenana. This is uh, the, the old palace that became the Zenana. And this is the, the, the Divaniam and the other facilities with, uh, uh, with the insertion of this uh, service court and other, um, other courtyards that have been added to the Zenana because the, this, this Zenana, you know, was growing and growing and growing. So uh, pay attention to this, uh, this change because it's, um, it's, uh, it is a nodal point of my discourse. This uh, logic, of course, also in the other palaces. Uh, let's, let's remove this here. Um, this is Bundi. Bundi Palace is on the, on the, on the hill. And uh, uh, it consisted uh, uh, originally by uh, a palace that was limited into the, the, an enclosure in this area that later on, with the necessary transformation and the addition of the various facilities and specialization in order to become a real royal site <clears throat> of, uh, of a Raja, you know, um, uh, you have this entrance, and this is uh, the basically is uh, becomes the divaniam. The throne is located. Let the throne say the, the side. The side of the raja is located here, and uh, uh, and then uh, this is the this is the this is the, the zanana. Then uh, the uh, one by one, the various courtyards and spaces of the of the of the facilities of the mardana are added here. Uh, 
for instance, the, um, the divanicas is here, it's covered and so on. This is a, 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 a courtyard of transition between the divanicas and uh, the new residence of the, of the Raja. Originally, the Raja re resided most probably in the corner of the, of the Zenana itself. He moved here. And then, uh, you know, all the, and then the addition later on of various other spaces, like uh, the, um, the Charba garden that you see here, that is connected with the famous uh, Chitra Shala, where you have all those beautiful uh, frescoes. Um, what I want to say is that uh, the uh, movement into this space remains uh, antinodal, okay? So you enter from here, you, in this point, you take a flight of, of stairs that originally probably was just a street or uh, not, uh, not covered, but now it is basically covered, that goes up, up, up into the Zenana. And also serves, you know, the other adjacent uh, near the tangent spaces that are located in, uh, in, the, in this part. In the other way from here, you climb into this into this building and you reach the uh, the hall of the divanyam or the um, the charbak okay so you have to imagine always these spaces as a, a component uh, having a component of those uh, of those uh, uh, courtyards one next to the other more or less specialized and then in between and so on, you know, uh, those uh, narrow, narrow cor corridors, cor uh, streets, uh, well, streets, uh, lanes, you know, that uh, serve all that, all that stuff. Always tangent, always along the edges and so on. Um, here you can understand better what, what, what I want to say. This is just the, the uh, ground floor uh, of the of the Zen, of the Zenana Bundi, uh, with uh, uh, eliminating all the additions and so on. This is the real original core in which you you read how uh, how serial and how simple is the first uh, you know uh, enclosure and settlement. And it was served by that flight of, um, of stir, stir, stirs that is not a real axis because it continuously uh, broken and uh, deviated by various checkpoints or, uh, or uh, doggy legs, uh, you know, diversions and so on until you reach the old, the old uh, Zenana. Reverse, uh, you know, you can uh, think that uh, when you face and interpret a complicated structure like this, in, in, in other palaces, most probably, if you want to find the original uh, part of the of the palace, you have to address yourself into the into the Zenana direct. Um, I make now. I open now another um, discourse very quickly. Uh, we left the Narsingji Palace uh, of um, Mansing in. Uh, in, uh, in Amer, and we see also what is uh, the evolution of the, of the familiar palaces, let's say the Haveli, for instance, and in particular in the area of, uh, of Amer. And uh, I have applied the usual reading uh, and distinction between uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the idea of the current types, that is uh, basically uh, the idea that people have in mind, you know, when they have to build the house, and this is organized diachronically, okay, from top down. Um, and then uh, every current type has uh, synchronic variations, okay? So it means those variations that occur at the same time. I have an idea in mind, but uh, I have to uh, adjust this idea to the reality, topo topography, for instance, or wealth also, and so on. And those are synchronic variations, okay? Uh, it goes from the simple, uh, um, the simple courtyard surrounded by ones uh, built on one side, built on two sides, uh, with increment increased, and then uh, not not axial entrance, for instance, um, 
built on two sides and so on until you arrive to the uh, definition of the full uh, courtyard and also the symmetrical okay um and uh, of course uh, then uh, at that point uh, you have uh, a clear idea of a virtual axis that crosses all the buildings you know longitudinally from the end to from uh, from the beginning to the end in this case in the chomu palace for instance of amber we are still in a, in a, in, a, in a, at the beginning of the, of the process in a certain way in the sense that uh, the uh, entrance that you ex that you expect here actually it's here okay so it is uh, a site under that bengal bengal uh, uh, domic entrance well mansing at this point we go back to this to the discourse of the of the of the of the royal palace mansing he starts to be he moves or he leaves the family and so on in nursing pala in nursing G palace and he moves on top of the ridge and he starts building his own palace and he starts from the zanana again but this time the zanana is is now almost a model in the sense that uh, he has a very clear idea of what uh, model of what this zanana should be and not a spontaneous you know um, uh, growth around the enclosure now it is planned it is uh, built along an enclosure but the, the enclosure is regular uh, it is sub the uh, um, it is uh, all the all this um, palace is organized in in um, apartments for the different ladies you know it is modular it is uh, it is organized also with an axis the act there is a it is always you know uh, antinodal as as a logic because you move uh, uh, no always in in this uh, crossing the 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 the, 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 the courtyard in all the direction wherever is convenient and uh, the, but it is also suggested uh, underlined by a sort of virtual axis by the presence of this little kiosk right in the middle you see more or less in plan the regularity and the rhythm okay of all the all the, all the palace and the little kiosk right in the middle then at this point you expect that the uh, the palace grows according to the scheme of uh, of the encampment which is it it's confirmed because you have the divan in cast you have the divan in up you have the big uh, open vestibule square for the facilities the daftar cane and all that stuff but it doesn't work with uh, 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 an axis as suggested by Blockman. Again, you know, you get out uh, from a site, you have a garden in front of you, you go around the garden, you can uh, you can reach the Divanicast, the pavilion, which is at the edge of the of the of the courtyard, the big courtyard here. Then uh, centrally you enter into the next. But uh, you don't get on the axis anything. But on one corner, you have the divaniam again at the edge with this part. Then from this side, you enter finally into the, uh, or you exit in this case, into the uh, the, vest the, 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 the big area vestibule. This is the section. So the, the sequence chronologically is also follows also the 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 levels of the of the palace. So Mansing is here on top and then down you go down and uh, the let's say the big square of service is it's at, at the lower at the lower level even this narrative is crossed together with another another narrative that i didn't mention which is the the landscape so it's clear that uh, the two uh, men um, nodal buildings uh, the Divaniam and the Divanikas are on this edge because they are overlooking the wonderful artificial lake that is here, that is not drawn here, but that everybody knows and so on, with also the hanging garden and so on and so on. Um, 
the uh, the story of the of the Aveli um, that we have left in Amber, when it is when the capital of uh, of the of the of the uh, of the Rajas of uh, Amber moved to, to to Jaipur, you know the city is planned, but not only the city is planned. At that point, also the Aveli, so the the normal residence is uh, codified. Let's say. In the sense that it becomes a model, a very clear model that is offered to the to the inhabitants. You know, there's a model just to copy and replicate, and the model is based on the sequence of the courtyards. You know, that could be, uh, as in this case, just two courtyards, even three sometimes. You know, um, and in in other cases, this co this courtyard is surrounded by strips that you see in the tail here. Okay structural strips that include the the the, the various uh, the various spaces and rooms um, um, spaces that that are of three types the closed room the room with uh, with uh, uh, with open front uh, into into another space and uh, the uh, the room that is open to the sky that actually is like a little courtyard uh, it's called chandra that uh, is uh, allows the the, the 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 light and air to enlighten all the various rooms uh, around. Um, okay, I'm almost finishing. Um, now, a, a very important the, after 1630, something very important occur in Orient, and almost in parallel. So it means that uh, the king of uh, the, the Safavid king of, of Iran, he built his own palace in the in the capital, Isfahan, uh, that you see here. And uh, almost in the same time, um, Shah Jahan, the nephew of Akbar, he built on uh, Red Fort in, uh, in Delhi. And uh, those, these two palaces see a radical change. Um, the Iranian, uh, the Iranian one maintains his own his own uh, tradition that of um, uh, controlling the sequence of the various courts uh, through uh, at least a system of access that are not uh, uh, not 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 so long extended, but they exist, and also a regular grid, a system that uh, regular grid that gives order to the disposal of the of the of the of the court. Yes, that is not almost, uh, let's say, casual, but it's order uh, according to uh, a basically agreed and, uh, and the job. You see here the reconstruction of the palace, okay? Because this, uh, to the left, uh, you have uh, a, draw, a drawing that is very, very detailed, very, very, very beautiful of a, of a Dutch traveler called Kempfer, that here it describes every detail of this, of this complex uh, palaces, palace. That I will describe here for you, and you can control. So, it the, the palace uh, is um, is facing a huge square that is 516 meters long. So the uh, and it it opens with two two gates into it. One is a sort of a service gate, okay, with uh, with the sequence uh, one after the other of those gates that leads into the, um, let's say, uh, the areas of the administration, uh, the equivalent of the Daftar Kane, okay? And then, um, and then, and then into other, uh, those courtyards, okay? Uh, of residential area of the, of the emperor. And then you have the royal entrance here, that is, uh, you know, uh, that had this monumental pavilion on top of that that was used by the royal court to overlook uh, into the into the square, and then uh, this sequence of of of, of, of courtyard, you know, all of them uh, very order and, and very similar, quite uh, in part similar. In the big gardens, of course, uh, we have the presence of the, the the special pavilions, you know, that mark the center of it. This is this disappeared. This is still existing. Um, I don't see the other one that still exists, but anyway, okay. Um, and uh, what happens uh, in uh, um, 
um, in Delhi. In Delhi, there is a, a, some uh, further uh, tentative by, uh, by Shah Jahan. The scheme is very similar. Uh, the, the, all the organization of the courtyards is uh, organized according to geometry and the grid and axis. Uh, therefore, uh, the, at the first sight, it's the similarity with uh, with Isfahan is quite evident. Um, we have to imagine easily that, that there were spies going up and down, and one was spying and copied from the other, maybe. But um, there is something more in the in uh, in uh, in the palace of Shah Jahan, um, and that is that uh, the palace of Shah Jahan. Um, is inserted into the city, is planned together with the city, let's say, and uh, tries to have uh, an organic relation with it that is uh, uh, provided by the presence of two axes, one axe and the cross axis, and uh, they still exist. Uh, one is Chandi, Chandni Chok, that is the main street of the bazaar of the Old Delhi, and the other is the Perpendicular Faiz Bazaar, and the two bazaars, let's say, streets, they meet in this point. One, Chandni Chok is arriving from here. I don't know if you can see. And Faiz Bazaar is crossing, entering from here, crossing, arriving into this point and going on up to this point. Okay, so there's this idea that the, the palace is the center of uh, the city. And uh, let's say, since uh, Delhi is uh, Delhi, the old the old Delhi planned by Shah Jahan is also in another way a replica of the of the round city of Baghdad. But this is another story. I'll tell you another time. There is this idea that Shah Jahan, eh, the king uh, of the of, of the world, is he really sit in the center of the world, and in fact the a usual uh, sequence of the of the of the palace is replicated here. In fact, we have the bazaar, the vestibule with the nakar kane. You see the pavilion here, and then you proceed into the courtyard of the uh, divanyam. You see only the tent from, from here, and then into the uh, divanikas and the private residence of Shah Jahan with the Burj overlooking the landscape. I am now, uh, I mean, I am uh, the, the guy that designed this perspective. Uh, it's a company drawing. Is in the position of the, of the Yamuna and the landscape, okay? And uh, the other narrative, of course, again, is the, uh, the organization of the residential part just uh, along the, uh, the edge of the fort, overlooking the, the landscape. And this you have uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Delhi, but it's a tradition that was already established in Agra, in the Agra fort, and so on and so forth. Note, this is the last notation, very important is that in this case, the division, the separation between Mardana and Zenana is uh, absolutely perfect because the, the Zenana is located to the left of this image or this area. Okay. Uh, this is the, the, the let's say, uh, the, 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 the public, semi-public and so on, the central structure of the public. And those are the spaces and the guards and so on of the, dedicated to the Mardana area. Um, I, I, I'm finished. I, uh, if we have time, we can, uh, mm, there's not much time, but uh, let's see. And uh, um, uh, I just want to say that uh, if you, I don't see why it doesn't go. But, um, what I know uh, about uh, the typological uh, interpretation of, of the fabric and, uh, and uh, architecture, I wrote in a book that called After Amnesia. I can uh, send you, uh, if you want, a PDF if you are interested in reading it. Yes. Um, probably I will send it to Professor Esther uh, Schmidt, uh, the PhD, and you can ask her if you want to, to, to have a copy. Um, thank you very much.
Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, this was, uh, of course, very complex, huge amounts of materials. I have many questions, but before I ask mine, I would like to ask the students and the audience if they have questions first. Is there anyone? Um, um, please raise your hand and then I can um, individually unmute you or use the chat and write your questions down there. So, um, all right, in the meantime, then I would like to start. Um, I'm very interested in room typologies and you mentioned a number of them. So I would really like to know what are all the room typologies you have identified? How uh, do you explain their evolution? And then <laughs> really difficult, how do you um, um, explain the process between um, how they became more popular, right? So we know that sometimes um, there were pattern books that had an in influence on um, architecture. You said, of course, there was marriage between Mughals and Rajputs. Rajputs also had administrative posts. And you also said that even those who weren't part of um, you know, this um, close link, let's say like the Meva family, who was the last Rajput family to um, join the Mughals, they were also influenced by this. How did this work? But let's start with the first question. I mean, we had the kind of um, um, the room typologies um, and what uh, are the parameters? You, you, yeah. yeah, so let's talk about the room typologies. What are the parameters that um, influence the room typologies? You know, Ful Mahel, Shish Mahel, we have the um, um, Daba halls, uh, Divani cars, and, you know, and so on. How many rooms or palaces or apartments in the palace did you identify? And what was their function? And what influenced this? And how did they spread? Uh, it's a, it's an intriguing uh, it's an intriguing question uh, um, um, because uh, um, let's say sometimes uh, sometimes those uh, uh, those um, um, those uh, beautiful titles also that uh, uh, they give to the to the palaces you know. Uh, Shish Mahal or, or similar Anuk Talao for the for the fountain and so on and so forth is something that also occurred in Iran. And um, a colleague of mine, it's not an idea of mine, but I I suspect that is it could be also. She suggests that most of those titles um, um, they. Um, they refer to a, a specific uh, type in the sense that uh, they have a specific form and they have uh, and they are transmitted through this uh, through this uh, term while for us you know when uh, at the beginning i was hearing those uh, fantastic names i thought that they were more flat flattening uh, flattening how do you say uh, Okay. Anyway, they were more addressed to the to the importance of the owner than uh, in reality uh, to the to mm -hmm. a type. Okay. And um, uh, therefore, so um, I'm rather convinced of the contrary <laughs> that those terms they refer to a specific type, and those are the what I call the uh, the nodal components mm -hmm. of the of the of the design of the palaces. Okay. So uh, we can easily imagine that uh, the uh, the pattern that was sometime following the work. This is the case of Akbar. He was sitting there, and uh, you know, starting. So uh, let's say in this way: How do uh, do I imagine the the design of those uh, uh, courtyards? Um, it's, it's a logic that starts from the enclosure. Okay. Uh, imagine an hypothetical wall that surrounds an enclosure, and then uh, the design goes around the, the edges. Of the light. So you have uh, a structure that is more serial in a certain case, and uh, that defines the, this uh, this anti nodal space. And then Akbar says, "Oh well, I would like to put on top of the 
uh, right there in the center of that uh, side, I would like to, to, to put this kind of thing. Because that is the only way we can imagine that uh, it goes on the design. Because we know that uh, mm. uh, for the plan, they had uh, a table with uh, squares like, uh, like uh, paper, you know, and they were able to sketch or de define the, uh, the plan of it. But we don't have uh, drawings of sections. We don't have drawings of, of course, we don't have drawings uh, of uh, elevations, except the very late in the, the, in the 19th century. So it means that uh, how to transmit this idea of, uh, of, uh, of the architecture to the, to the people that were uh, building. Because they had the codes, okay? So they sh were sharing codes. So the company of the of the masons and the, the uh, and the, the the king of the patron they had the codes and part of the codes was also this type that type and the other type and um, about uh, the in, in to 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 locate to 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 find exactly the correspondence between. Those names and the real and the real structure, that is a matter of research still. Yes, I, I, I agree. And I think, you know, I feel that the interior design of um, palaces and Indian buildings in general has been entirely neglected. Uh, it is either a focus on the architecture and the surveys or, um, you know, individual kind of uh, case studies. And um, I think it's very important to really identify these room typologies, to study them. And very often they relate to the interior design, like the Shish Mahal, like the, uh, you know, the, the portrait gallery and all of these. These are fixed elements in palaces. And it's important to really study this and identify this. It hasn't been done. I'm working on porcelain rooms, for example. I'm working on the Chini Kana and uh, Shish Mahal because they're closely linked and the materiality is important. That's quite different from the European context, right? Where it was the function that determined um, the, uh, the name. But other similarities are also there. Like you have a division, of course, between public and private that is very, very similar. You have a division between male and female, and that existed um, or particularly since the 17th century with the Chateau de Versailles, Louis XIV. And that's actually many things coincide with India. Even the Maison de Plaisance, I find that coincides with what is happening in India with the Pleasure Palace, Lake Palaces, all of this that you can see. Uh, but before I comment more, um, uh, Sunita Kohli uh, would like to comment. I asked IT to unmute Sunita Kohli. It, is this working? Because I still see, I think Sunita, you should be able to unmute. Yeah, there, okay. <laughs> Hello. And, Hello. Thank you so good much. Morning. Good morning. Go, uh, wait. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, actually, my question is uh, linked to uh, Dr. Schmitz because She's asked you about room typologies, which we know, but I want, it's a continuation really of that question, is that why is there that there is so little a documentation on the, uh, the soft furnishing, say, or the decoration, which is not fixed, mm. uh, what we would call maybe perhaps the interior architecture of these mehels from within. But there doesn't seem to be, uh, there doesn't seem to be that sort of documentation or that sort of study. Maybe I don't know about it. Maybe you have done something. I would, uh, uh, Mr. Petruluccio, please uh, request you to answer that. That are I, these studies uh, being done on these major, uh, major forts in, in Rajasthan, if we just stay with one area, or Agra and Delhi? Um, personally, I um, uh, after uh, after um, you know in the last twenty years, I, I I'm I'm more interested into the uh, into the urban fabric. Um, that means that I'm interested more into the uh, into the houses of the normal people and uh, and uh, the aggregation and uh, the form of the city, depending on the of the of the urban fabric, <laughs> and uh, therefore I, I did not develop that side of the palaces entering more into the issue also of the uh, of the movable com components of the palace, for instance, and so on. Uh, 
um, given that. Um, if you want to know my opinion, why the, there is little concern about uh, the, all that or little studies, uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, the Indian people, they started to study their own architecture since, uh, since 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20. But before, there was no interest into the past by the Indians. They were all concerned about the future. And um, yeah. so, I mean, uh, to, to give an idea, uh, I would, so a, a short example. I, um, we were, I was with the students in, uh, in, um, in Bicaner, and we studied Bicaner at that time. Um, and uh, we were surveying the, uh, the area of the cemetery of the Rajas with the cenotaphs of that, you know, and so on. And then uh, uh, I crossed the, the street. I mean, it was, a, it was a, in, the, in, in the open area. It's, it's not an urban area. I crossed the street and I entered into a complex uh, made out of uh, buildings, uh, artificial ponds and so on. Incredible. You probably the 15th, uh, 15, 16th century, never mentioned in any guide, in any book. Nobody knows anything about that. Just crossing the street. Can you imagine? Or uh, uh, the last uh, work we did was on Mandu, and we discovered incredible structures and the complexes and so on, never surveyed, never mentioned. So this is the situation probably, no? It's not the intention uh, of anybody to destroy or make it disappear. It's only that the India is so huge and so little people are, uh, are working on it. I have to add that in the last years, a lot of people now in India, they started to be interested in, uh, in, uh, in their own uh, uh, heritage and so on, no? uh, the activity of intact and so on. So um, not to mention the difficulty of publishing in India, not that you know more than me, you know, you have little opportunities. Uh, there's no one very, my magazine that is really dedicated to the problem of the heritage and publishes all this material that uh, is coming out. Uh, this is, uh, I think, is the reason. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Uh, yes, I we have to admit you. that we've never been a great country of uh, paid great attention to documentation. I mean, if there was one thing we could really have learned from the British was their fairly meticulous documentation that they do in their own country. But that didn't happen. So uh, maybe we are complicit in allowing our, uh, our own heritage to deteriorate because as we all know, the moment a building is built, its uh, deterioration starts unless there is very constant conservation of it and unless things are also documented. Thank you so much. And I look forward to asking Nini for the, if I may, for the PDF that you will send to her. Yes, I will send it to to Suni, to, um, to to Professor uh, to Professor Schmidt. But if you want, you can if you have my email, uh, you can send me a note, and I will send you directly with pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. You're welcome.